of the state and circumstances of his people. It says that the Lord, Ezekiel says, the Lord led him out by the Spirit and set him down in the midst of the valley of dry bones. The Spirit of the Lord placed him there to see the condition of God's people. That the people of God have become dry, separated, and dysfunctional. And as we begin to look at this again, you notice in that verse, the second verse it says, and he called me to pass by them. It was not enough for God to set the prophet in the midst of them. But now God takes the prophet and he begins to move them around and about the dry bone. In order for the prophet Ezekiel not to just see a bird's eye view, but see up close. Yeah. 
angel said, hear the words of the Lord because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. These dry bones needed to have some faith. No, no, no use the prophet trying to do it all by himself. It is up to you to receive what God has for you. And it's up to you to move and act on what God has for you. See, when the word of God comes, either one or two things are going to happen. Either you're going to pass the moment and pass the moment become a monument. I mean, just a statue and still, come on now. Y'all gonna make me preach up again. Preach it. See, you, you, you look at my wife. God gave her a word and told her, don't look back. But when she got up to about to the mountaintop, she looked back and saw y'all is looking back. And you becoming a monument. Either when the word comes to you, you become a monument or you become a movement. But the Bible says in here, we live and move and have our being. If you're going to either allow God's word to move you or you're going to allow God's word to keep you stagnant. Because some of you will not trust in God enough to move out of your dead, dry situation. You're blaming God for everything that's going wrong in your life. God, the reason why I'm in this situation is because my forefathers, I feel my Holy Ghost coming. Because my forefathers was in this situation, that's why I do what I do. Oh, but baby, you ain't got no excuse no more. Because when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, ah, then your daddy didn't become hate with Harrison. Your daddy didn't become Pamala. No, your daddy wasn't these different people, but your daddy became our father. Your daddy became the right I am. Your daddy began to be the one that Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah. He became your daddy, and your daddy, because now you got new blood running through your veins. Walking in the newness of life. Yes. <laughs> but see, this enemy, he tries to come and he tries to separate you and he tries to get you to a place where, God, I don't even know if you exist. He tries to pull you away from the fire. Just like he did in these dry homes. They've been in a battle and seemingly they lost the battle. But the Bible tells me in 2 Chronicles 20 and 19. He says the battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. You've been fighting in a battle and it seems like you're losing the battle. Oh, see, y'all want me to talk to you. You've been fighting the battle of drug addictions and seem like it every time you put it on the shelf, seem like it keeps crying out to you. Just come take another hit, come take another drink, it'll make you feel better. Not the problem. Ah, some of you are fighting battles of pornography and illicit sex. And, well, baby, you're not doing it. Doing it, but you got it all up in your mind. And you see, the devil is trying to get you to think that that's all right. But I come to tell you, the devil is a liar. The enemy is having you try to give up different things and lay things aside. Yes, God has called you to lay aside every sin and every weight that even besets you. But baby, if you can do it all by yourself. With the God that sits high and a God that looks low. What do you need but the liver of Jesus if you can do it all by yourself? So we find ourselves in the battle just like these people were. And the enemy had to utterly 
Because see the God I serve. He can bring life in their situation. Call those 
things and now there's those words. Oh, I'm just calling things out, which no, they weren't. Yeah. And we're speaking to our situation, but because we have no power, nor do we command it to happen because we don't know what the menu is. What's the menu? We don't know what's on the menu, so we call the things out that we don't even know what's on the menu. But if we know it's in the menu and we know it's for our lives, we can order what he says we can ask. But because we don't speak with authority, we see ya. we're calling things out and speaking to a situation they're speaking back to us. Come on, come on. We're telling that drunk thing to come out. That's right. It's coming, no, I ain't coming out. No. We're calling that homebunging thing to come out. Okay. And they're talking about, no, 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 baby, you don't want to be out here. Right. When you got to go to get God, right. when you know what the word of God says, then I will walk home and I will follow the spirit of the Lord. When you know that concerning your life, you just don't have to speak to your situation, but you can order your situation and line up with God. Tell situation, tell emotion, tell emotion. You got to line up with the word of God. And the word of God said, I will walk holy, I will live right, I will be delivered because I've ordered it. It's on the menu. shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose in this earth shall be loose in heaven. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. That is Psalm 24 and 1. The Bible says in Psalm uh, 50 and 10, the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to the Lord. He says also, he says, the king's heart is hand and turn it at will. I say this, there is something going on in the atmosphere that you can order things in God and they will come to pass. Look at this. He said, if I abide in you and you abide in me, whatsoever you ask in what my name shall come to pass. But the thing is, we don't want to abide in him. We want to look and do everything else. We come to God. Everybody else is getting everything that I need. I got to do it all by myself. Well, baby, you don't have to do it by yourself. Because God is a sovereign God and he will take care of you. Second point, second point. Speak life to your situation, your dead situation. The problem is with us in the church, we always speak in death. Come on. Come on. The Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. This little thing that you got right here determines your future. When you begin to speak death over your situation, then death will be your situation. But if you speak life, That's why you don't tell your little kids, you little hard-headed, nappy little boy, you ain't my little boy, you just like your dad. Yeah. 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 Tell him he's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if he's hard-headed, got a nappy head. Don't tell him he's gonna be just like this. Tell him he's gonna be a godly and righteous.
be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they. Like that, and chaos come like that. Begin to spread your wings. 